Norm, this rivalry is so amazing, and the fact that we don't have it, what, what does that mean? I mean, it, it, it seems like there's a big hole in the state, even. Uh, you're going to set me off here. <laughs> in my mind, this is shameful. Mm. It is shameful that Texas and Texas a and don't play any, anymore. I don't want to blame either side. Both of them have pettiness and jealousy and backbiting and finger-pointing, and it's silly. I mean, it's like Florida and Florida State not playing anymore. It would be like UCLA and USC not playing anymore. Oregon, Oregon State, Mississippi, Mississippi State. There are great rivalries in America, great rivalries that this no longer exists is a shame. It's a shame to the sport. It's a shame to fans. It's a shame to our entertainment. It's a shame for what was a game that was on a calendar every year that we had had to see and I don't care who you blame but there's blame here and both schools should be ashamed this rivalry is gone I couldn't I, I don't think anyone could say it better Norm um, we've, we've got Fred here and yes. I know you're a big fan of Earl um, what was your fondest memories of, of, of this game and, and, and the players that have played in it there's so many amazing names do you have one moment that just like Oh, I can't get that kid out of my mind. There isn't a moment. There's a feeling for me. There's a feeling of anticipation for this game every year. It didn't matter who was favored. It didn't matter the circumstance of the standings, though it often was an incredibly critical game in the national picture and in the conference picture. For me, it isn't so much a moment that stood out. It was the feeling. As Texas and Texas A&M approached, you understood this was one of the great games in America. This was one of the games that college football was proudest of. And it's just sad that we don't see it every year. Do you think this even goes down and affects the high school level? I mean, I, Texas high school football is a religion, and now, you know, these schools are not losing it. You've got TCU, you've got Baylor. It seems like the state is different. What, what are your feelings about Texas football as a whole? Well, we've got A&M in another conference. We've got Texas, which has declined the last few years. We have seen the rise of TCU and Baylor, and that's fantastic. It's fantastic for Texas football. It suggests that you can come from the middle or lower regions of Texas football and create something special. Uh, it's, it's like they say in New York, oh, the NBA is better when the Knicks are winning. Well, it, it's nice when Texas wins, but you know what? It's just nice to see wonderful competitive football. I'm sure the people at A&M are happy they left for the Southeast Conference. They're in the best conference in America, top to bottom. But I still get to Thanksgiving, and that little voice says, where's the Texas and A&M game? Norm, do you mind if I ask a question about you? Sure. Um, you do the Normathon every year, and you, you battle through. Um, what is it about that particular day and night that means so much to you? And, and I mean, you're an icon in the industry, and yet you just keep chugging along. You, it's like a Energizer Bunny is not going to stop. That day has become um, a day that we take such wonderful pride in at the station. So many people contribute to that day. I mean, my producer, Mike Saroy, is with me all 18 hours, or actually closer to 20, because we get there about 4 in the morning. It's for such an incredible cause. Austin Street, I believe, is the finest homeless center in America. And they're not just stashing people. They're working to get them out of homelessness. They're working to change their conditions. And to simply be able to have some small part in the many lives that are changed is just something that drives you. It encourages you. You go see the effects of the money raised. And you say to yourself, I am so happy to be doing 18 hours again this Sure. You know, we had Rick Carlisle out here a couple nights ago, and my first question was about ping pong because of you and what you did. Um, you have such power. What, what, is that, what does that feel like to, to wield, uh, uh, not only to, to bring that great event, but for charity, too? It's another way of extending the Mavericks and the ticket. Our station has power. 
the people at the station have power. So many of us do charitable events. It's, it's a wonderful, fine station with power that's got a place in this city. And to not use it would be a mistake. To not use that power to make our city better would be a mistake. All the shows are now doing things in charitable efforts. The Normathon may have the highest numerical impact. But every show on that station is doing things to help people. And that's what we should do. That's what we're charged with. That's what a powerful station in a city should do. It should work to affect betterment in its city. Last question, Norm. Um, do you have any words for Michael Gruber? <laughs> Stand up, Mike. Oh, you are standing up. You're talking about a really wonderful young man and one of my best friends in the world, and I'm so proud of him. He is now going out and he's climbing a ladder. He's going to be an incredible success, and we're just happy we could open one small door for him. And go Mavs, too, and go Stars and Evers. Thank you so much, Norm.